there's one thing more popular than Bitcoin, it's startups. And there isn't any other place quite like the Silicon Valley for startups. Today, I'm joined by Scott Robinson, one of the organizers of the Bitcoin Silicon Valley meetup group. Scott, thanks for joining us. How are things? Going great. Thanks for having me, Adam. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like to talk with uh, John Mohan whenever I can because he runs a really exciting group out of New York that has a lot of activity going on. It seems like Silicon Valley should really be a hotbed for this, but I've never actually been to that to that meetup. Can you kind of give me a taste? Absolutely. We're holding the meetup every Tuesday, 6 to 8 p.m. at Plug and Play Tech Center. Um, this was handed to me by Roger after he had moved to Japan. So we started back in September and there were probably about 20 or 30 people showing up, but it's been growing quickly. Nothing like John's in New York, which I believe has over 500 attendees or at least uh, people registered for the meetup, but we're pushing 300 and it's uh, 50 people plus consistently. So it's kind of been growing in, in size and both momentum and excitement down here in the Valley. So yeah, we've been doing it every Tuesday for about, I guess, what is that? A little over two months now. So that's awesome. How, uh, and, and 300 is nothing to be, I mean, that's, that's, that's no problem at all. That's a good number. I think that's like one of the, you guys are probably in the top five with that, you know, different meetups do things kind of differently. So what is it that you guys do there? Do you do presentations? Is it more just like a, a networking informal thing or like, what's the, what, what would somebody see if they went there? Well, the typical format is we invite speakers both locally and abroad. We've had people from Hashfast, Coinbase, we had Eddie from Seedcoin, who's throwing the Bitcoin conference end of this week. Travis from Coin Market, Jaron from Coin Center. We had Guy, the glass pay guy. But yeah, the typical format's maybe two to three speakers. Um, they kick off around 6.30, 6.45. They each have about 20 minutes just to talk about how they're involved in the Bitcoin space, um, what they're doing, how they came to know Bitcoin. And then um, at the end, we just kind of have a, an open networking session. And typically, it's not a, an ending point at 8 p.m. It usually pushes to 9. Every once in a while, we've had that actually go out to maybe 2 or 3 in the morning, depending on how excited people were talking about things. So, There was a time when it seemed like just about every startup coming out of the Bitcoin space was like... Like focused around this idea of trying to solve the exchange problem. And it really seems like in the past, you know, it, it seems like that's getting to be less of what we're seeing. But I, I really don't know what's coming next as far as as far as startups are concerned. Are you guys seeing any trends? Absolutely. Um, so one of the, uh, the cool aspects to my working with the, the Bitcoin meetup here is um, Plug and Play Tech Center is an incubator in Sunnyvale, and they've got about 300 startups in the building. So there's kind of two fronts, I would say, where we're seeing new trends. One is actual, you know, established startups that have nothing to do with Bitcoin looking at it as either a platform or a scaling avenue. One example I would give is City Bliss. They're kind of a high-end fashion design group that allow designers to basically sell to the masses um, and cut out the middleman or retailers. And, you know, they gave a quick presentation. They were able to do a Q&A and kind of ask you know, the Bitcoin community, what do you guys think? Would this be something you'd be looking at? And of course, you know, it's the stereotypical IT startup kind of 90% male, 10% female environment. So right. um, it looked like it was a very interesting way to, you know, maybe to enroll guys to buy really nice clothes for their, their girls. And it's pretty interesting. So that's one way we, we're seeing people are adopting Bitcoin. And the other other side of things is, well, a little bit more established with the you know, exchanges and platforms. And as the, uh, the, the regulatory um, problems are hashed out, um, we're seeing a lot more people kind of be preemptive in dealing with that. So they're accounting for tax working with different legal entities to make sure they have their bases covered. So there's a little bit more of a, an aggressive stance in entering into Bitcoin as it becomes more adopted worldwide. And I think the value add is, well, you can scale on a global environment with using Bitcoin, which is something you can't always use elsewhere. So I, uh, I think it's pretty exciting just to see you know, people from different, I'd say, verticals um, looking at Bitcoin as an opportunity to, to take their business globally. If Plug and Play has 300 startups, you know, in the building, then I'm especially curious. I mean, like, how is Bitcoin compared to other things that people are creating startups around? And you said that existing startups are looking at it as an avenue to expand into. That seems like a really big deal to me. I mean, do you think that in the non-Bitcoin startup scene, this could really be seen as a, as a way to broaden your, you know, your options? Absolutely. There was uh, an interview with Andreessen back in, I'd say, mid-October on Pando Daily. And the trend that he noticed is it's not only do 
are there more startups entering the space? But experienced and very talented developing teams are looking at it far more seriously. And I think that indicates just a growing kind of excitement about what Bitcoin can do, uh, the implications of the protocol, and just you know the, the availability, I guess, to, to move your business anywhere you want. Um, so it's interesting on two fronts. The first front, I would say, is domestically, the, the regulatory environment in the U.S. is kind of hard to understand. And it's very scary for somebody to take on the liability of you know entering into a non-regulated space. Obviously, there's a lot at stake if you're doing something like that. And it's very expensive to get the specialty kind of um, insight from attorneys. So we see a lot of startups abroad that are adopting this much faster. So that's kind of the one exciting relationship that we have at Plug and Play um, is they have a number of international accelerators from Jordan, Poland, German, Singapore. I mean, you name it, we're kind of all over the place. And uh, we've noticed, you know, there's a couple of startups um, in Singapore, especially that are looking very hard at Bitcoin. And then on the other front, you see this growing kind of trustworthiness of Bitcoin in and of itself. The market cap's now pushing over $4 billion. And while it's still volatile, people are coming up with reasons to incorporate it. So uh, I think in the long term, yes, you're seeing better dev teams, better ideas, expanding beyond just the actual accessibility to Bitcoin. And I think a lot of people understand, you know, this protocol is very similar to TCP IP when it first came out. And you saw things like Netscape, and this has kind of been you know, said before, but there's a lot of different platforms that can be built up upon this peer-to-peer system. So I think that's really exciting. Let's real quickly talk about the, the U.S. in that context. You're an incubator. I don't think that you deal with Bitcoin startups yet specifically, but you do deal with startups. So if you were going to deal with Bitcoin startups, is the regulatory environment something that gives you pause? Or is that just, you know, I mean, like that's the opportunity because nobody knows what it's going to be. So you may as well build it now while we're figuring it out. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'd say both. So on the one hand, the, the, the vertical is incredible. The level of risk may outweigh currently the, the return, but the potentiality of a, of a major shift in the economy and the global scale is possible. So I think from the riskier side of things, yes, it's a very exciting vertical and there could be a lot of, a lot of opportunity there. Um, on the flip side of that, I think a lot of the VCs in the Valley are skeptical in the sense of in investing straight to startups. It's almost as though you're seeing a lot more being put into the over, overall, I guess, ecosystem of Bitcoin. So entities like Second Market that are bringing a trust to most traders or what the Winklevoss twins are doing with their comparable product. It's something that I think people are starting to venture into. There's not as much, um, let's say, major movement in the startup investment side of things. But from a plug and play perspective, we're, we're very excited. I mean, we've We've got kind of a, an, a hope to build the entire full line from hosting Bitcoin miners in our data center to investing in 10 Bitcoin startups over the next 12 months. We're just embracing it from the get-go. I think you know, we're a little bit late to the game. There's another group, Boost.VC, with Adam Draper, just a little bit north of us in San Mateo, and they've kind of gone through a second batch now. Um, and they've got some exciting companies coming out of there. But I, I think we're ready to move, and um, we should have some exciting announcements coming later this week at the conference in Singapore. You guys are actually a little bit late to the party, it seems like. I think that there are actually two other incubators, although they're not in California, besides uh, Boost VC. But I think that this is actually a really interesting, uh, an, an interesting question. Um, why now? Is plug and play getting into being an incubator or working and being, you know, being highly interested in Bitcoin? What changed and when did that change? Sure. Uh, well, to be honest, um, our, our founder and CEO did not did not see the value in Bitcoin. I think a lot of people, when they look at Bitcoin, they say it's a Ponzi scheme or it's too volatile or there's really no value. It's not backed by anything. So, I mean, that's kind of the you know, the judgment of the book before it's open kind of perspective. And it took our founder coming to one of our meetups and meeting Charlie Lee from Coinbase to really understand the excitement and the, the implications of having a peer-to-peer decentralized uh, monetary system. So, you know, I've been talking about it since I'd say at least April. I've been a fan since uh, well into 2011, 2012. So for me, it was initially an enthusiast kind of perspective, but it began to grow as the economy grew with it. And it wasn't until I'd say mid to late September after a few of these meetings that our, our founder stepped in. Said came down to one of the meetups and met a lot of the people there and saw just all the, you know, the exciting energy that's coming out. So that, yeah, I mean, I'd say, sure, we're not the first, we're not a flagship entity moving 
the needle at this point, but I think we're a lot more comfortable in knowing the, you know, after meeting all these people coming to the meetup and creating the community here at Plug and Play, I think we have more of a robust kind of environment that uh, will allow us to navigate a little bit more accurately and specifically, you know, remove the liability of a problem, I guess, down the road. So we're a little bit more confident in where Bitcoin's going and I think that warrants a lot more energy and excitement from our sides of things because, you know, Bitcoin could potentially be a a major disruption to the world economy. So we're paying attention. You know, it's interesting that we're talking about Bitcoin here and Charlie Lee is the is the guy who who helped you guys kind of tip over into Bitcoin. But he's actually the lead developer of Litecoin. You know, we've been talking Absolutely. primarily about Bitcoin. Are you guys looking at any other altcoins or is it a primarily or is it entirely the focus is on Bitcoin? Uh, I think all virtual currencies. So, you know, we've been talking to a few different of these trading platforms. Uh, the exciting side of one of them is all seven um, altcoins they have on their trading platform. So I wouldn't say it's a hedge, but, it, you know, there is the question is, OK, which, you know, with Bitcoin having been around the longest and being adopted the fastest, we see that as maybe kind of, like I said earlier, it's it's the Netscape kind of parallel. You know, they're not the dominant browser, but from what they did came Mozilla and, you know, all these other browsers that we know today. And these different kind of platforms that were built upon the protocol were, you know, first kind of navigated through, you know, an entity like Netscape. So perhaps Bitcoin is not the end all say all 20, 30 years from now, but it's certainly leading the charge. And uh, to say that there won't be another virtual currency that would be just as competitive or functionally more important, I couldn't say. So I don't think we're ruling anything else out, but Bitcoin is the primary focus just because we see a lot of people moving in that space and there's a lot more energy being put into the development of different platforms on the protocol. And so, yeah, we're sticking mostly with Bitcoin startups at this point. You're putting on a Bitcoin mini conference and startup pitch event that I'll be a panelist on in early December. What's the goal with this and how do these things work? Plug and Play puts on a quarterly expo. And the whole point is to basically present up to 30 startups to our network and community and the public, um, which is basically a three minute rapid fire pitch session. So people get on, show their deck, explain what they're doing, explain how they'll make money, etc. And uh, it's, it's a way for us to kind of deliver the product that we develop. So in, in our building, we invest in only about 5% of the 300 startups that are here. And that's, that's a unique way of looking at things because I feel like it, it allows our nets to kind of reach further. And it gives us a little bit more of insight as to uh, where the trends are going. So, I mean, you know, if you look at Y Combinator, they only basically put through their program companies they've invested in, similar with 500 startups and a number of the other incubators in the area. And because we have so many different brick and mortar facilities abroad and just different bridge programs between Axel Springer in Berlin and some of the uh, the, the Boast Capital up in um, Canada, uh, we feel as though the expo allows us to kind of pick and choose from a, a larger net and understand you know, which are the actual trends that are really picking up traction. So this December 5th, starting at 1 p.m., we'll have about 30 different startups, 15 of which will be international startups for one of our Korean programs. And some of them will be related to fintech. And the remaining 15 will be Bitcoin and cryptocurrency related startups. So we'll just be basically allowing them to go up on stage, give their pitch to about 500 to 1,000 people that show up. There'll be about 100 investors or more in, in the actual audience, and then they'll have their demo tables in which they can network afterward. So it's just a great opportunity for us to allow people to kind of see what's going on here, plug and play, see the startups that we're working with and some of the new trends that are coming out on the startup side of things. So we're recording this probably a couple of days before it's going to air. Uh, are you guys still looking for, for startups? Absolutely. So we are looking for startups up through about a week and a half prior to Expo. So if you're a Bitcoin or fintech startup looking for funding and you're around or willing to come down to Sunnyvale, California, uh, we'd absolutely love you to, to, to apply at plugandplaytechcenter.com slash expo. You can kind of see some of the information about what it's about, how to apply, the date, registration, et cetera. So, yeah, we'd uh, we'd love to have more people. The more, the merrier. And uh, I'm sure we can always fit an extra one if we need to. So you mentioned that uh, that you've got a announcement coming up on this this Friday. That that's actually when the show is going to air. Do you think that you can you can tell us what? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're very excited here at Plug and Play to announce a, uh, a new fund specific to Bitcoin startups. We've made it a goal to invest in at least 10 startups in the next 12 months. We'll also have an accelerator program here at Plug and Play specific to Bitcoin. So if you have any questions or you'd like to learn more about the program, feel free to shoot me an email, scott at plugandplaytechcenter.com. 
And I'm also the webmaster here at Plug and Play, so I got to finish up the, the Bitcoin website before I travel. We're very excited to fully embrace the whole Bitcoin ecosystem, and, and we're looking to make a splash with a number of new startups in the area. Is it normal for you to have a specific fund set aside to a different niche that you're attacking with startups? Yes. So we, we have certain funds that are made for our accelerator programs. So a number of the bridge programs, including like our uh, our Volkswagen ERL accelerators is specific to any automotive technology. And so that bridges with a number of different automotive entities like Toyota or Mercedes. And the idea is we try and create a, a market or vertical specific accelerator program that allows us to kind of leverage our corporate relationships by introducing them in deal flow to some of the startups we have in the program. And so in this case, with Bitcoin or virtual currency, we'll have different relationships that we're leveraging just from the ecosystem we're building here between the meetup community and you know, kind of the data center things we're doing. Um, and just you know, a number of the relationships we have are with financial institutions. So it gives us a unique offering in creating these acceleration programs. Um, and in this case, uh, it'll be specific to anyone that's in Bitcoin or is related to financial tech with virtual currency, this will be a great kind of opportunity to see where you can go and, and use our support system as it already exists here. Scott Robinson, Bitcoin Silicon Valley and plug and play Bitcoin. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Adam. Hi, listener. Here at Let's Talk Bitcoin, we're building a global network of correspondents able to contribute on the ground perspective when cryptocurrency related information comes across their filters. If you'd like to join our global conversation, send an email with your name and geographic or cultural niche to apply at letstalkbitcoin.com. Just like Bitcoin, the only barrier to entry is your time and good work. Thanks for listening.